Shut up and sit down. Welcome everybody to the Down for Punchcast, episode 27. I'm your host, Jason Saris, and with me is David Reed. David Reed. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. It's been a few weeks. It's been, uh, been a couple weeks, I guess, yeah. since you were last one there. I think the last one was uh, me and me and Topher, I think, did the last couple yes, episodes. I believe you did, and things have been good. Thank good. You. Yes. Glad to hear it. Um, so since it's been a while, what are you, what are you playing? Uh, so I picked up Cuphead. Okay. I've been playing Cuphead as well. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm glad... I'm glad that we're kind of on the same page here. So why don't we come back to Cuphead in a minute? Sure. Because this episode, I want to get into nostalgia and video games because it seems like we might be in a new, almost like a renaissance of, n- <sighs> of nostalgic retro games. I wouldn't call it a renaissance. <laughs> I would call it a cash grab based on minor popularity. <laughs> but Maybe anyway, it's a cash grab. It's a cash grab. Uh, but um, either way, I think that that's part of it, and and I think that this is a lot of this hinges around how popular Cuphead sure. is right now so I think that's probably a good a good jump off point so well I do have one other thing I have yeah. been playing I guess um, outside of that uh, I picked up uh, the new Metroid Samus Returns for 3DS okay and so at first I was like alright I like Metroid like I really love Metroid I've played all of them and they're they're great um, and I was kind of not quite sure to th- what to think about with this one, especially when I watched the videos from E3. I'm like, this game kind of looks like garbage. I'm like, I don't know if this looks fun at all. Like, it doesn't look 2D. It looks too 3D for me. I'm like, so anyway, I picked it up, and the game is like hard, surprisingly. Do you remember that it has scamples, right? It does have scamples. <laughs> and it's so funny because every time I use the scamples, uh, I think, think about that. Browsing. Yeah, I think Which, about that. If you, if you didn't catch our E3 episode, David had mentioned at the time that when they were talking about the Samus game, the uh, what Samus Returns, Samus Returns, the girl who was demoing it could not say Scan Pulse, so instead she kept saying Scamples. Scamples. She's like, oh, and you it took a while to figure out like what is a Scample? Yeah, it was like, so oh, funny. Scan Pulse. Gotcha. Um, it drove me crazy, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, the scam, the Scamples are great in that game, um, and Scan Pulse for that matter. Uh, but it's hard, and then like you. It's got this repetitive feature that, luckily, I don't know how it hasn't worn on me completely yet, but, like, it got to a point where I was just like, I hate this. I hate doing this. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you find this big monument thing, right? It's like a big yeah. circle, and it's got, like, all these ancient carvings in it, and you stand on a little platform, and these little lights start to light up around it. And it's like, that means go kill, like, eight Metroids. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, if you remember what a Metroid looks like in, like, Super Metroid and... Um, you know, even the original Metroid, they're like these little round bubble things with the three eyes and they have the little teeth yeah, yeah. and they like go over you and then you use the freeze beam and kill them with missiles. Right. Okay. And in this game, uh, they kind of look like that, but they're not. Uh, and then they have like... There's different variations. Isn't there that? are variations of them and they get like harder. So like there's one that is like this little like blob thing and it has like a little underbelly kind of mm-hmm. soft point you have to shoot missiles at, right? Um, and that's, that's fine. But like, all they do is they just go and they just fly past you really quickly. And occasionally they'll do a move where you can do the melee counter, right? The melee counter, like puts you into like a little mini cutscene. You just shoot a bunch of missiles at it and stuff. Like it's, it's cool. Like Sam just jumps on it and she's like shooting missiles at its underside and all that. And then it jumps off and then you continue the fight. And early on in the game, it's really hard because like, if you shoot any other part of their body, your missiles just bounce off. Like their carapace is so hard that it doesn't, you know, you can't hit them. So you gotta hit the underside. Right. And if you remember from the demo, if you hold down like the R button, you can basically move your gun in a like, in a very like accurate arch, like above your head, right? So like I can really pinpoint my accuracy wherever I want it. I don't have to just go like here, 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 and here. It's got like, you know, complete 180 degree ro- like rotation. Yeah. But still hitting these things at like on the fly without like them going into that because pre- you know how boss fights are right like you look for that moment of opportunity and you'll get that but if you don't have that you can still take pot shots at the thing with your missiles but a lot of times you'll miss hmm. so I've never run out of missiles or anything silly um, and the game does have a backup in case you do like there's little things they drop you can you know generate collect you know I have pickups and stuff right so you can get more missiles during the fight if you need to. But, like, it's so repetitive. And then you fight, like, this really hard version. And then it does this dumb thing where there's, like, there's four rooms. And you go into one, and you're like, all right, ready to fight this Metroid. And, like, there's nothing in here. Like, what do I do? So then you go to the next room. You're like, 
all right, here we go. This has got to be it. No, no, there's nothing still in here. Yeah. Eventually, you go into one of these four rooms, and there's a Metroid in there. You fight it, and it's like the harder version, right? The me- Like the medium one. So there's these large sections of the map that are just like these open rooms where you have to fight a Metroid like four separate times before it dies. Yeah. And you're like, what is the point of prolonging this repetitive nonsense? Why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> the, the small ones, not so bad. You can kill them pretty quickly. And if you played Super Metroid, um, one of the coolest things you get in the game at some point is uh, super missiles. They're, like, much more powerful missiles. I'd say they're, like, five regular missiles contained into one or something, right? So they do a lot of damage. It takes you, like, 20 or 15 hours just to get those. Like, if you're playing casually like I am. It takes forever to get them. And then you get a limited amount. But, you know, they're really powerful and, and they're good. And ever since I've gotten them, like... These boss fights have become cake. Like, no problem. <laughs> I just I just sit there and I'm just like, psh, 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 dead. All right, cool. Move on to the next one. But, like, the the best part of a Metroid game is when you finally, like, you've gone to all these areas and you're like, oh, can I, oh, I can't get there yet. All right, I'll come back to that. But then by the time you, you, you know, you get so far in the game, you're like, I don't remember where any of this stuff is. I'm just going to literally have to look at the map and be like, all right, I don't think I've been to that area. And it does a good job of tracking yeah. that. But, like, if you want to go and collect all the stuff or explain or explore all the areas. But unless you've played the game before, you wouldn't know what item you need necessarily to get to a certain point until the game teaches you, like, this item lets you open these doors. You're like, oh, okay, that's what those green doors were. Now I can go into Now them. you got to go back and do it. Right. So that game is like a reimagining of uh, Metroid Samus. Metroid 2. Metroid 2. The one you love. The Return of Samus. Yes, which yes. is one that I love. So when you're saying t- it, like, it sounds exactly like like the old one. Um, which kind of fits in today's theme of the nostalgia game, sure. right? So yeah. it, it seems like we're getting a lot of callbacks or throwbacks or reimaginings in that case of older style games. And and we granted we've always kind of had periodic, you know, nostalgia retro games kind of come through here or there, whether it be a re- rare replay type of thing mm-hmm. or just a one off maybe remake. You know, in that case we have a new game, but it's very much based off of the old game. Cuphead is a brand new game, but it's very much based off the style of an old game. Yes. We're seeing a lot of that kind of stuff now. And a lot of those games, like the themes in them is that they're really hard, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've been playing Cuphead. Cuphead's very hard, is it not? It's brutal. It's, it's, <laughs> it's But, you know, ever I used to love hard games, and then I think I stopped, and I just kind of started to, like, you know, not really want to devote the time to learning a hard game or whatever. And then that one day, it was the day that I discovered Dark Souls. It changed everything. I'm not even kidding. Like, when I figured out that I could beat Dark Souls and then I was able to finish the other ones and I've beaten them multiple times now, I'm starting to love hard games. I'm starting to love pattern memorization. Do you think we've just gotten spoiled? Like, I mean, why is it that games have gotten, as a whole, easier, for lack of better terms, than they were in the past? Well, I mean, every game now has a tutorial. Because there's no manuals, right? No game comes with a manual that explains how the game is supposed to be played or control schemes, anything like that. Sure. So you have a tutorial in every game, which in a way is good and accessible um, for a lot of people. But like tutorials, a lot of times you're just like, ugh, I just... I've been just, so guilty of tutorials where it's like, that comes up and you're like, okay, 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 let me play, let me play. I get it, I get it. I've played yeah. games before. And then you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, I know. Like, I don't no know what idea. to do. I know. I do you the know, same thing. It's like, all oh, stupid me. I had to <laughs> B, 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 B. Yep. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, then there's like, like a lot of games don't necessarily have like difficulty cha- uh, like uh, modifiers anymore. Like where it's like, how do you want to start the game? Normal, easy, or hard? Like there are still some of those. Yeah. But some games do it better than others, you know? Like I remember playing Half-Life 2 on a hard mode difficulty, and I the game just felt hard, but it didn't feel like enemies had more health, like a cheap way of saying the game's hard. Like, you have less ammo, enemies have more health, and that's what makes it hard. Like, that's stupid to me. It's like, find a way to, you know, or enemies do more damage to you or something. Find a way to increase the challenge outside of the just increasing some numbers here and decreasing numbers here. So, in your opinion, do do games have to be challenging in order to be an excellent game? No, not at all. As long as the game is fun in general. But that doesn't necessarily mean reinventing the wheel. It means just, um, you know, obviously start with your idea and then integrate some sort of gameplay that, that's, you know... And I think the easiest way to describe this is that an easy out for a game is to add um, much like how Metroid even invented it back in the day. Where it's like, you start off and the game's pretty cool. You're like shooting stuff and this is neat. 
And then like you get an upgrade. You're like, oh, well, that means I get more upgrades, right? So then there it becomes like a hunt. And then there's like the um, the anticipation of getting something new that's going to change the way the game plays later on. Sure, yeah. Or like a new gun, you know, in any shooter game or whatever, or a new piece of armor that lets you do something cool. It has a special ability. Like in a game like Destiny, for example, you know, like you can run faster now, um, whatever, with this legendary armor. I think that that, which is basically, in the way I describe it, it's, it's the RPG element, right? It's, it's like how RPGs, you would get new weapons and new armor, and these things would change the way the game, your characters play. That you could do more damage, or take more hits, or potentially do other cool stuff. And then that trickled down into every type of game, basically. You know, like even racing games have it. It's like race and race five times, and you get new parts for your car or something like that. So does that Instead take just, away the fun? Because they're, I mean, do you feel like it's just throwing in busy work? I think it's created an epidemic of people having OCD that don't technically have OCD. Uh, I will tell you that there are some games that I end up with, you know, a form of OCD in a sense, right? Because you feel like you got to collect all the I have to get upgrades. everything. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I have to. And I don't feel like a game is finished unless I do that. Not all games are like that, though. But the ones that I enjoy, or at least, not shoot, to be honest, not even some games I enjoy. Sometimes I just feel like I have to do it. Hmm. It's weird. You, you mentioned, in your explanation, you mentioned about how games just have to be fun, right? Yeah. And, and I struggle with this because... You know, you look at you look at a game like Cuphead, and, and this was a game that originally when they announced it, I, I looked at it and I'm like, wow, this the aesthetic of this looks amazing. Like, sure. I'm really impressed with the artwork, the the way that the game is presented, the you know the hand hand drawn cartoon and the music and all that stuff. Like, it's I really, Steamboat Willie in video game form. Yeah, like, I I was really appreciative of the fact that it existed, but it was not something that was really on my radar radar for me to purchase. Yeah, and you know, as we got closer and closer, everyone was getting more and more excited, and I still was very lukewarm to and it. Less like, and less I'm probably games not are coming out it. on Xbox. You're like, well, this is the only <laughs> thing that's available. So. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, but when it came out and everybody's going nuts over it on Twitter and yeah. online, and I, and I finally said, you know what? It's only 20 bucks. I'm going to get sure, it. Sure, right? why not? So I started playing it, and I like the game a lot. But going back to your idea of fun, like the game is very hard. <laughs> and there are many times where I'm just upset in my like, like yeah. I'm so close. And, it, and it's almost, it's weird because like I enjoy the game, but there are lots of times I am not having fun. I know. And it's almost... But it's a really delicate balance yes, of where is. does the, where is that line? That's like, I mean, that game is extremely difficult though on purpose, right? I mean, it gives you three health points. Of, of one hit is one health point, you know, basically. So right. that's uh, you get three hits, and the bosses have like four different forms, you know, or whatever. It's like five different in some cases. And like, I encountered something the other day where did you fight the uh, the, the two frogs? Yes. The boxing yeah, frogs. Yeah, yeah. So the first time I fought them, when they turn into the casino machine, where you have to like hit the little hand and it you know spins the dials or whatever. Yeah. So the first time I fought them and I beat them when I got and I did it on regular mode, uh, it turned out like it was like three frog heads, which is just these spinning platforms that just come out of the bottom, and there you can jump on them. You just have to jump on them and they keep getting faster and faster, and that's it. So. I was like, ah, it wasn't so bad, and I beat him. Well, I played the game again at a friend's house. And you got the ones that have that go up and down? Yes. Yeah. So I didn't even encounter the harder ones where, like, the flames are coming down here and the ones up here, and then there was, like, another one. I think there's three total. It took me maybe six or seven times of getting to that point before I got the ones that you're talking about, which were just the platforms where you can jump I had all three of those. Because, like, these things are coming out, and I'm like, I'm screwed. Like, I have nowhere to go. Like, if I go up here, I end up getting killed by this. If I go down there, I get burned. Yep. And it, it was maddening. It's... It's just weird because it seems like it was a common thing. I, I, I don't know if I've just gotten spoiled over the years because I, I recognize that games used to be more like this. Maybe yes. not to this degree, but you there know, was a lot of games oh, that were more... You'd be surprised. Go back, go back and play like any, any like NES um, like side-scrolling adventure game. Like any one of them, Power Blade, Ninja Turtles, um, Batman, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, yeah. Mega Man for that matter. Mega Did you ever Man was play Solar Striker? Probably. What is it called? Solar Striker. No. There was a Game Boy game called, like the original Game Boy game called Solar Striker, and you're in like a little plane, and you go back and forth, and you shoot, and you get your upgrades for your gun or whatever. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing, where you can only survive it's like, like an one R2. or two. It's like an R-type kind of a game. Yeah. And you can only hit like, you get like two or three hits and you die, right? Um, but the levels get more complex. And I remember as a kid, 
you know, you had to learn the patterns, kind of like how Cuphead is, and you kind of get used to, like, all right, so the ships are going to come out of here, and you attack them all this way, and then they're going to come out of here. It's all muscle memory, basically. And then you have to go, and as you get, like, into deeper and deeper levels, it just gets more and more convoluted. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I ever beat the game. Like, right. I don't even know how many levels there were to that game. I think I got, like, eight or nine deep. But see the beauty of it though, and I know you remember it, but it's not like a, it's not like a feeling of failure that you've carried with you your whole life though. Kind Whereas of. I think, well, maybe I guess it depends I mean, on how I, you feel. I don't know if I would put it as strong as failure, but it was this idea of like, there's somewhere there was this game that when I first turned it on, I really liked it, and I have yet to ever beat it because. Oh yeah, I, dude, I've never beaten the original Castlevania, and I can't tell you how many times I've tried. I've gotten to Frankenstein. No, Grim Reaper is as far as I've gotten. I think he's the second to last boss. Can I beat the Grim Reaper? Yeah. But the problem is, is that I don't want to have to do what, you, in a way, maybe like basically Cuphead kind of makes you do, but not to the extent of a game like Castlevania. Whereas Castlevania, there's no save system, so you basically have to get to the end of the game on the amount of lives that you have. And if you don't do that, then the game makes you start basically at level one again, which sucks because you're like, all right, I don't got time for this anymore. And that, We're and adults. About. Is we got to move on. Does that make it a better experience? No, but that's the problem. That's how NES games were back in the day. But a game like Cuphead is like, you, you got to the very end of the level and you died. But the levels aren't that long. So it's like, okay. like right. and, and what it is, and you probably can attest to this, but it's that feeling of like, oh, man, I was so close. All right, like one more try. Like one more try. All right, one more try. Oh, yeah, you get hooked. You like get you hooked. can't stop. You feel like, oh, so close. Yes. I got it this time, though. And you don't got it. Most of the time you do worse than that, that time. That is true. That... But then there's that moment where you do figure it out. Like the, the boss you're on right now is the guy on the roller coaster. Right. Right? Yeah. And you, what, spent an hour or two maybe with this guy now? I, he, each instance of fighting him, I probably spend an hour to an hour and a half until I'm like, I got to walk away from this. And I've probably done that 10 times. <laughs> you also didn't know you had new guns and a special that you could equip. And apparently you missed all of those tutorials. <laughs> so maybe I they're equipped useful. some stuff, but I didn't go back once I collected more coins. More stuff. <laughs> so like you're sitting there with the base gun in the game trying to fight this guy still. But yeah, I mean, that the, probably would have helped. Yeah. The thing is, is that once you f- finish it, you're you feel probably great. going to feel really good. Oh yeah, when I beat that the the one that turns into the moon, yes, you know, on the, that plane level, whatever. Yeah, I was so frustrated because I kept getting so close, and right at the end, when all the stuff comes to flying at you, like they just here's all the things, all the things. I would get so frustrated because I would die, and then when I finally got it, I was I was cursing her out like I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah you kicked it, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm a grown man <laughs> that's like, like taunting this fictional character as if I had just wrecked its life. And did it you realize that you can turn into the small little plane and maneuver better? Yes. For that level? Okay. I did. Yeah. And I that's one of those levels are some right now some of my favorite because they, they they you get in this mode where you're sitting there in your big plane mode, you're shooting and stuff, and then it's like, oh God, this unavoidable thing is coming at me. But if I turn into a small plane, I get really fast maneuvering. And I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, so then like my, my thumb rolls over and I hit the Y button or whatever it is and like, I turn to this tiny plane, and I'm, like, moving all around. And the minute I get out of danger, I mean, I'm back to big plane mode. And I'll tell you, there that, that moment of, like, um, you're, like, doing well, here's danger. All right, I've averted danger. Now I'm back into normal mode again. It makes me feel really, really talented. When your brain starts processing yes, it all, like, it's by itself. Oh, yeah, it's I great. love it. But I give the, I, my hats off to, to the studio because, and I forget, what's the name, H, HDMR? Something like that. Somewhere, uh, something like that. They do a wonderful job of, of putting all kinds of interesting elements into each game type. Like, they're all different. Every mm-hmm. boss is different, and they have lots of things going on where it, it, it may seem some simplistic, but until you kind of play through and you see the different types of ways that you have to outmaneuver things, it's really impressive. Oh, yeah. And the different mechanics that they work into the different boss levels or the run-and-gun stages or whatnot... It's fascinating, and it's it, it, it's a lot of fun. It just teeters on that point of this is not fun anymore, it, and it does because it's not like I I don't go home every day and play this game. Like this is a game that I saw, I'm like, all right, well, you know, what? Yeah. I'm I'm good for like a good fifteen twenty minutes of gameplay, and I'll play this. So, do you think that you know, like I said, it seems like we're having like a resurgence of this old themed kind of games, like this retro style, whether it's new games are in that vein or you know remakes or reimaginings or whatever. We see. You know, we've got the Cuphead, we've got the Samus game, mm-hmm. um, we've even, you know, we've got the NES Classic, the Super yep. NES Club Mini. Like, people are, it seems like a lot of, like, nostalgia-based video game stuff yes. is all happening at the same time. Is this, is this because it has just gotten long enough, we've gone long enough without these things that now that they seem fun and interesting again? Or is it just a new generation that didn't get a chance to experience it that... 
is craving for something like this, or is it well, all cyclical? Like, what? Why do you think that we're entering this stage again? I know we don't have sales numbers, but I can tell you that the NES and the SNES Classic combined sell 150 so well. units because that's all they made. That's all he made. Yeah. Uh, those sell so well because Nintendo has created a narrative that they don't produce enough of anything. And so that stuff sells like crazy because when you, I don't know how it works, but I, I, I'm sure with a, both together we could figure out a way to describe this. But yeah, I want something and it's really hard to get. And then I'm telling you how excited I am about something that's impossible to get. Do you want me to explain to you? Because I can explain to you. Yeah, please do. Just so my family, my my family owns a restaurant. And a long time ago, we used to do festivals where mm-hmm. they would, you know, you'd make a, you go to a stand and it'd be like an Oktoberfest somewhere. You'd set up a stand and. You know, we'd sell stuff or whatever. Sure. My father taught me a long time ago that you never, when I would work these things, my natural inclination would be like, cool, get customers in and out, right? Yeah. Let's move these people in and out because the more customers, the more you can serve, right? Yeah. Or like it's just, you know, what you would naturally think. My father said, no, no. You want to help everybody, but you don't have to go too fast. You always want there to be a line Mm -hmm. because when you see a line, you naturally say, Wow, what's over there? It must yes. be really great if somebody's waiting in line for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that's the theory that Nintendo operates with. Right. Because they want to say, we want to always make it so that there's something that you're dying to get. And everyone's like, well, i got to get it before that guy. Because if he's willing to wait right. for it and try to go through hoops for it, then I should too. Exactly. And then that becomes contagious. And so even people that don't necessarily want one start to want one, right? Yep. And a lot of people want it for nefarious reasons, I think, honestly. Throw it up on eBay. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I hate that. That's one thing about our society that just makes me want to just burn it down. But um, you have... Uh, you have like something like, and don't get me wrong, it's it's still cool. And I think I've told you though before, but my my impression of both the SNES and the NES Mini are that they are technologically piles of garbage. <laughs> uh, two foot cords on the NES, five foot cords on the Super Nintendo. At least they improved it. Uh, very short HDMI cord. Uh, if you want to restart the game, you have to go and touch the system and hit the power button or reset or whatever it is. Yeah, those things. In today's day and age, don't fly, okay? And don't get me wrong. I understand that that's how we all used to play video games. But none of those things bother me because it's, an, they it's a would. $60 system or an $80 system. Do you own right? one? I don't because I can't get one. <laughs> but it would it would bother you, and I'll it, tell you. And the same thing happens to almost every single person that I know that gets one. They want it. The minute it's in their hands, they finally have achieved whatever feeling they need, okay? Like they needed this to fill this gap, this void, or whatever it is. They'll plug it in, and they'll play it, and they'll play a game, and they'll die in something, or they'll spend, like, an hour with an RP, one of the RPGs. They're like, all right, cool, like, what other games are on here? Like, let me see. And you'll never go back to any of those games. Or in much like we were talking about with, like, Castlevania or something, you get so far, and you die, and then you just start all the way back at the beginning again, you will never go back to that game ever again. It might take you a year or two. You maybe will. But it will not be an immediate, like, all right, I got to play this like yeah. Cuphead. I got to beat this level. I got to beat this game. You won't do it. And so the $80 that you're spending, and I love the term collector's item. What does that mean? Unless you sell it or unless you're a collector that doesn't need to show it off to anybody, but it means something to you, that's fine. Yeah. But I think the term collector's item is a load of garbage. Like it doesn't – like if I came over here and you had a Super Nintendo – and I saw it, but I didn't care. But you decided to tell me about it. Well, it's more important to you than it is to me. But you decided to show me because you're proud of it, right? Right. Well, good for you. I don't care if you have one. You know, that's <laughs> that's fantastic. But I don't like the design of it. I don't like the mentality behind these things. Um, and on top of all that, you have a Genesis one. You have, and I know there's like a major Atari one coming out, this other thing, but there are like, not necessarily knockoffs, but like cheaper versions, like yeah, Atari like they're box like with third, 80 games. Yeah, they're like third parties that get the license right. for it. And they, like yeah. at games or something like that, I think is yeah, one yeah. of them. And then you have like this Genesis one, and it's there was a Genesis one last year too. Um, and then of course, like this goes back to the old days where you would get like a Miss Pac-Man joystick, but it was like, you know, a little box. Yeah, and you bought it like plug CBS it your TV. for 20 bucks or something. Right, yeah. And they have this kind of stuff. And then you will never believe what I found the other day. Do you remember back in the day they were like... Um, if you're telling me you found an Atari Jaguar, I will, no. I will pick up drinking coffee, it go was, make a I literally cup, think it's it just called. It <laughs> I think it's just called electronic football, okay. electronic basketball. 
and that's all they are. And they're like Game Boys with these little big blue D pads and two buttons and a small little red dot. Those those, ty- those uh, like Tiger, Tiger Electronics yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were those the best. have just come back out. Nice. Now, good news is, if you're a really big fan, you don't have to find nine volt batteries for them anymore. They're running on two or three double A's. Hallelujah. Uh, I guess. But like, okay, neat. But again, what are you gonna do with it? Like, I had an original one at my house less than six months ago. Yeah. An original from the 70s. You know what I did with it? Threw it I away. plugged batteries in it to make sure it worked, and then I sold it because huh. it's stupid. Huh. And I, I know that's my opinion. No, and, and, I, and I can see your point with one like that. That, I think, is I just is don't a like these sound. trends. I don't like to see them because they're temporary. But, but it definitely is a trend, and it's at least this time around, it's a big trend. And but you why mentioned the like, other things selling? Why isn't Genesis or Atari selling? Well, Atari's trying. I mean, you mentioned that thing. Like, Atari, for anybody who doesn't know, is coming out with a Atari box, right? They're on Indiegogo trying to secure the rest of their funding is that to mean, get back in the console business. Is it, that, is it that hard for a company now, like Atari? They have to Indiegogo an Atari box? I guess so. For God's sake. Well, sakes. I mean, Atari, Atari has been in and out of bankruptcy. I think it's sold multiple times. So, like, the people who own Atari now are not the same people that originally made Atari. I'm sure, yeah. So, you know, it's gone through a lot of things. But um, why don't we take a quick look at the clip? They had a teaser. There's a teaser trailer, I guess you call it, yeah. for the Atari box. So if any of our viewers haven't seen it, here's the quick teaser that Atari put out. This way you have an idea of what we're referring to. So what do you think of the design? Well, it's got wood on it. <laughs> and so, it's real wood. Did you know oh, that? Oh, yeah. It's real they wood. They put up an Instagram photo afterward that said, yes, that's real wood or something to that effect, which it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, it reminds me of like those old televisions that were like considered a piece of furniture. Like now you just throw it up on the wall. Yeah. But at the time, it not only was like a big tube TV, but it also was in a big wooden box. I want to nerd out about this stuff. But I think within the next year... You're going to replace it in your podcast because I'm just an angry old man that hates everything. <laughs> um, but I really do have an, a fondness for this stuff. I, I guess I, I mainly just – I don't want to see like cheap like cheap things come out that are cool for a day and then go away. You know what I mean? I want to see things that last. Are you and, saying that because you don't care for the design and the design well, bothers you? I don't care for Atari, first of all. I think Atari is one of the – of gaming's limitations – um, go back to an NES game. It was still 8-bit. It had you know a reason 256 colors in it. The games were reasonably smart and well designed. Um, they had a lot of variety, even in some games for that matter. And there were different types of games, right? You had all these different types. Yeah. You go to Atari, and Atari is like 4-bit, 16 colors. But it was. I mean, <laughs> what? How many different games are like? I mean, yes, there are a lot of different games on Atari. I Atari get it. Atari owns a ton but, of properties. So like, I don't know if they all if they made all of them right. or if they've acquired some of them over the years. But there are a lot of like nostalgic old school games that Atari now owns. And this yes. box is mainly going to be used to to play those things. Now, there's a potential that it could also take new software. But they're not. They haven't said that. Uh, well, so, they said uh, it's know. going to have a like a a reasonable selection of games on it. Well, we don't even know what that number means. And realistically, if you're buying an Atari box, wouldn't you want Atari games on your Atari box? You would, yeah. So but there's like, I mean, but it's a Steam machine. It's it is and it isn't. I mean, there's like 500 something Atari titles, and it'll probably let you. I don't know. But, you got to remember, they have to pay royalties to all the sub companies that made games for them. And for any of those companies if that either have been acquisition, I mean, how many of those have just died? A lot off? of those companies have been taken over by others. Like they're part of something else. Like I'm sure Bally Midway is owned by somebody. Could be. And I'm not saying Bally Midway exists anymore. And but maybe not somebody have to pay bought royalties, the rights. But to somebody them. probably bought the rights it to those could, games. It could be. It's the same reason that Tech Mobile has no player names in the game when you play it on the NES Classic. If you play the original cartridge, it does obviously. Sure. But the player names do not exist in the NES version of Tech Mobile on the Classic because they did not want to pay the royalties, obviously, for that. That's different, But at different, the same though. time, I know, I'm getting to a okay. similarity, right, though. Okay. My the, the similarity is that, yes, they would have had to probably pay the NFL for that, right? Which 
or, and the players. You got to play. Or the, pay, the play, you have to go the players, right? Pay all these players, some of which may not be alive anymore. But that wasn't a thing anymore. Like back in the day, like they could get away with that stuff. It and also now doesn't you can't. matter because it, it nobody... does matter because when you don't know who Howie Long is in the lineup based on his <laughs> number alone, you can't be a defensive running back. Or a quarter, whatever. I don't know anything about football. But a lot lie. of these people that but, are playing, the playing that game now, don't even know who those football players are. Like you know, you, I do. if you're a 16 year old kid but picking up an was, NES Classic, you don't know who any of those. I hate to be like are. this, but that was make or break for me, man. It was. It was make or break because it, th- I knew the players that I wanted to pick whenever I was on defense. Yeah. And when I was on offense, it doesn't matter. You just throw to the guy that's furthest on down the field, but. That mattered to me, and it's not there. But it only matters to you because you knew that it was there originally. If you hadn't played it that way to begin with, it wouldn't matter to you. Yeah, but if you hadn't played Tech Mobile to begin with, the odds are you won't like Tech Mobile That's because you've too. probably played Madden 2015 <laughs> or whatever it is. You That's know. Fair. But my same the same point though goes along with um, if they had to do something like that where they had to pay the players, pay the NFL, right? Well, they probably had to pay Tecmo for the rights to Tecmo Bowl, along with paying like companies that either acquisitioned like a claim or Konami or you know Capcom or anything like that. So why do you think there's only a handful of selection on that system when potentially the NES library is over 500 games? Well, where's the other 450 games roughly? You know, for why the aren't NES any, class, yeah? Why why isn't well, there an upgradable SD? Why isn't there an upgradable SD memory card slot that lets you add more games? five years then they can they can come Make out with the NES one? Classic two. What are you gonna? What, what's the point of that though? Just another cash grab. This Bad whole design. thing has been a cash grab. But we're in a renaissance, Jason. I know we're, we're in a renaissance. They're taking of advantage of the renaissance. retro games. Now going back to your point earlier about I'm sorry. oh it's eighty bucks and you have all these problems. With yeah, it, whatever. yeah, yeah. I bring up the Atari thing because the Atari. Is got a new design, right? It doesn't look like an old Atari. No. They, they and granted, I mean, it's very easy to hate the design. I mean, you saw from the thing, like it's either a love it or hate it thing. I'm not wild about it. There's things I can appreciate about it. Sure. But I don't know that I would want it sitting on my, you know, sitting in my my entertainment center. Yeah. But anyway, so it's got an up. It's got a modern design, right? It's probably going to have, uh, you know, modern controllers. It has modern ports, HDMI, all this other stuff. <sighs> 4K Atari games. It, it could be 4K. Holy I don't know. Holy crap. But it's got all these things on here, right? Yeah. And it's $300. Yeah, it's a lot of money. You know what I mean? It's a so small this, computer. Well, because you're, you're paying for all these upgraded things. So you only got a two-foot cord. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you would have put wireless on there, then, well, now it's 80 bucks, right? And if you would have put the longer extension cord, now it's 85 And then you do the other thing in there, now it's 105 Like, at some point, it gets too much. So if you're going to just say... Here it is. Here's the minimum amount okay. we can put in here to give you the nostalgic feeling that you feel oh so warm and fuzzy about. That's what happens. Break down the price of every one of those games on the secondary market right now. Like, they're all used, right? So, like, let's say a game like uh, Chrono Trigger. Well, I know it's not on there. Okay, let's say Final Fantasy III because that's on the SNES. Okay. Classic. That's probably a $60 to $80 game on the secondary market right now, right? You think? Uh, I don't For know. For Final Fantasy III? No it's like one of the more rare games. It's like that and Chrono Trigger are very hard to find, right? Okay. Well, even like Secret of Mana, you know, $45 game probably is my guess if you were to buy it secondary, like uh, the physical cartridge. Okay. Well, uh, two of the games on the SNES Classic warrant the price of it. And don't get me wrong, those are great games. And if anyone hasn't played them, you really should. Final Fantasy III, Secret of Mana, Super Mario RPG, Super Metroid... And there's a handful of other great games on there, but those are some of the core ones. But I don't the think value that... of those games alone is t- like two times the amount of the price of the SNES Classic. But you're not Nintendo is not building that console or you know whatever you call it if it's a console, I guess. Sure. They're not building the NES Classic or the SNES Classic for the person that is going out there and says, I have to have Final Fantasy three, and they're going to pay the sixty dollars for it to have it in their original console. They're no. in there for the people that are, like, this is for the super casual casual fan, which like, man, I remember all those games. I would love to pop that in again. It's for the hardcore ones, man. Or and it's for too. the people that are super, you know, get the nostalgia thing going. Yeah. And it's for the people that say, here, I gave you a taste of all that old stuff that you like so much. Now go buy the rest of it from our Switch marketplace that still hasn't gotten up yet. Yeah, which but eventually happen. it will, and then you're oh, going to buy okay. the rest of it. I'm, I, you know, and that, that brings me to a, a something I was thinking about. Where is that? When is that thing going to be showing up? Because I don't know. why would they release it when they would? Then that would be like, well, why? Why would I go spend? Say, like, I really want to play Super Metroid again. Well, 
why would I go on and buy for 80 bucks when I could just spend $10 on the Switch Marketplace and then have it with me and I can take it and port- portably? So good move, Nintendo. You're obviously not releasing this thing because you want to market because Nintendo, this other garbage. Because Nintendo is your dealer and they have to give you a little bump. Oh my God. <laughs> just this way you get a taste and then you want to come back for more when they got the good stuff. Oh, just give me that. Ret- I just need the like the retro marketplace or whatever they're going to call it, virtual console. I want that so bad because I mean the Switch. That's the thing is that the Switch has so much potential. I just don't want to see them like try to do it too slowly, where eventually the popularity does go away. Yeah. Because look, let's be honest. After Mario Odyssey, I know we have some really cool games coming still, like Pokemon, uh, most likely a Super Smash Brothers and Metroid. But, I mean, Mario and Zelda are your two big hitters, and, like, after you do that, unless you're releasing a sequel, and, like, anytime soon, I don't want to see another Zelda on another console. Like, give me another one on this system. Give yeah. me another Mario. Keep this thing alive for a long time. Or just do what Xbox does and release more powerful versions of the same thing. <laughs> and then this way I don't have to worry about upgrading I, to the second what? I have console. heard I have heard rumors that there uh, there could be a, uh, a, a upgraded dock for the switch down the road this way the console itself stays the same but when you put it in the dock it then upscales it to whatever resolution or really? gives extra horsepower yeah that's kind of neat but i don't know i don't buy into that because i play my thing mobiles all like pretty much exclusively and i think you do too yeah yeah i've, I mean, I've actually never only. played it on a television yeah and i have a few times and it's cool but i don't know i just rather would play it mobile it's so much more convenient yeah, the fact that you can console game on the go is is great. It's, it, and it's not like we couldn't do that before with a PS Vita, for example, right? Or even a PSP. Yeah. For Hold that on, let me get that wireless connection. Go- oh, oh, yeah. Hold on, let oh. me get the. Oh, oh it's probably because oh. you didn't pay your AT and T oh, bill. I'm too far. Yeah, you oh. didn't pay your AT and T bill. I thought I can go anywhere with this, but, but I have to just be within my. House. Oh, do you have three G? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. You should got the four G version. Yeah. yeah. Now I know that there were a lot of problems with that, but we kind of already had that. It's just Nintendo did it, oh, did it better, I think. Yeah. Because. Well, this was the, their only yeah, option. Really. They actually put the console in, in as a portable rather than have it, you know, try to stream from the console. Which, I, by the way, I started doing PS4 remote play like through my PC. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Like, I can just plug in the controller on my PC and load up a program, and my PlayStation turns on, and I have a game on it now. Yeah, I did that with my Xbox uh, a handful of times, where I would go up in bed, put my laptop on, and I could play it from bed, yeah. and then whatever. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know why I stopped doing it. I don't know. I mean, like, I I have different. Like, I used to play in my in like in a basement with a big TV and a yeah. couch and all that stuff. And then for some reason, I didn't want to be down there anymore. Oh, I know why I stopped because whenever I wasn't playing on the television, it was because somebody else wanted to watch the television. But then if I kicked on the game from my laptop via remote play, there you go. It made it go on the television that they were watching. So I might as you well could, just... should have just bought a Wii U. Could have just played it on the tablet. Yeah. So I got to play to all of the. Halo games? All the hot titles that the Wii The Gears yeah. of Wars? Yeah. Yeah, and all that. But I don't know. But I, I like that. I love I love the ability to to play in different areas now, like at my house. Like So, like, I don't want to be in my basement anymore for some weird reason. It's like... It's spooky. No, it's bad memories of having back <laughs> issues and being stuck down there for three months. But um, I don't want to be down there anymore. So, for me, like, I have all of my consoles upstairs now, and I bought an HDMI splitter. And I have two monitors, and so I just hit a little button... And I have all of my consoles and my PC on within these two monitors. So nice. mainly, like, I have my computer up here and my games on the other monitor. I'm sitting in a chair and I'm doing two things at once, which I like doing. Watching a baseball game, playing PlayStation, whatever it is. It's great. Um, but like, the remote, like, um, because my monitors don't have speakers, remote play has fixed my audio issues. Because it plays my audio through the remote play through my computer speakers, which is great. Whereas the direct connection into the monitor doesn't work like a I TV see. would because there's no speakers with it right yeah. so i've had to find alternative ways to do this and dude it's fantastic i love it nice so like it's a way for me to to be able to still want to game because i i mean we talked about it earlier um offside the sh- or outside of the show but struggling to to, to maintain interest in something because there's so much coming out yeah so well um but good. I don't want an Atari box, if that's what you were asking me. <laughs> no. I, I think the Atari box is hilarious and silly, and much like Steam Machines will fade away into nothingness. It could, if it, um, it could also just not get funded. I know there are like 60,000 people that signed up for interest in this thing, but that's the key word is interest. Yeah, like I think I saw, I saw, like, cause I want to stay just informed. Just see what's it. going if on If it ends up it. being, you know, something interesting where, you know, it takes it gets new games and mm-hmm. it's got some kind of exclusive or something, maybe I'll listen. Name me five Atari games that you want to play. I mean, 
believe it or not, I would love to play Pong. Okay. Um, I mean, like, these are all, like, those, like, the Pong, the Centipede, you know what I mean? Like, these are, like, the old... But you don't know if those are necessarily going to be there. So, like... I I don't. I, 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 I mean, know you can have... probably name, like, the standards. You can be, like, Centipede, Dig Dug, um, you know, Frogger, uh, I don't know, Jungle Hunt, or not Jungle, Pitfall um, would be another one. I mean, one. they have tons of properties. And, like they I said, do. they've acquired but other how ones. How many good? Do you really want to play E.T., probably, right? So th- well, the problem is... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the problem is, is that I don't want to play any of those for three hundred dollars. Right. You know what I, I mean? Don't if that was, if that was a sixty dollar Atari box, yeah, I would maybe you could consider play them it. in your browser probably right now if you wanted yeah, to. Probably. Um, but like, there's some games that I really have fond memories of. Like Jungle Hunt was a big favorite of mine. I loved Congo Bongo. That was another one. Um, I enjoy Frogger. Obviously, that's a great game. I, I hate like Centipede. Frogger. Can't stand it. <laughs> Love Miss Pac Man, but it has to have a speed mod. And most likely, it won't. So Miss Pac Man's out. Miss Pac Man was uh, Namco though. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah but it still it was like an old Atari thing. I mean, I'm sure it was on Was Atari. it on Atari, I'm too? 100% sure. It probably it is, was. Yes. You're right. You're then there's like right. the original Mario Brothers, um, which is, by the way, also coming to Switch as part of their little arcade package of games. Did you notice that? No. Oh. Uh, I don't get any news about Nintendo. I don't, mean, yeah. don't worry. You're not missing much. It's like, it's the arcade versions of some of their classic games. And if you've never played the arcade version of Punch Out, it's not very good. It's like wireframe Little Mac, but he's the same size as Glass Joe. Like he's not like tiny Little Mac. He's just like Mac. Sure. So I guess you just don't call him, call him Little Mac. Um, Big Mac. Big Mac. Mac yeah, Jr. Call him Big Mac. Um, but, 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 but. <laughs> oh no! Now we got to pay McDonald's. Don't do that. No. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I I think there's only like maybe five Atari games. Oh, Burger Time was another one I loved. Like I'm saying, Hubert. Like, okay, great. But there's no guarantee that those major right. titles will That's be why. there it's because easy they're to just major hit the for interest a reason. Thing in there, and you fi- figure out what they're doing on the end. Right. Um, so I guess I get in closing to going back to the original point of all this, the nostalgia games. Right. We look at games like Cuphead and all this other stuff. This is for me. I think that these things are a fun thing to do every once in a while. I'm not in any hurry for Cuphead 2. As much as I'm enjoying Cuphead 1, I can wait a while for like Cuphead. 10 years away. It, it could be. But I wouldn't want every game to be like Cuphead. I wouldn't want every game to be this nostalgic type of game, whether it be because it's a super hard kind of game or because it's you know it's just formatted different or mm-hmm. you have to do a lot of the backtracking stuff. I like having it as part of my variety it, You know, in the games I play. You have moods, man. Everyone has a mood for yeah. a game. Sometimes so, you want to shoot something. Other times you just want to die a lot. So while I do think that there is a resurgence or a renaissance of nostalgic retro gaming right now, I don't think it's, I, at least I hope, it's not something that it's going to be everybody producing all the time. I like to have it to, the, you know, it's at a point where it's just enough now that you can pick and choose what you want to participate in, and I think that's cool. Well, what do you think about, um, like, for example, uh, movies have been criticized about this, like, say, the last 10 years. Like, it's like, they just keep we have zero it. ideas anymore. Let's just go back into what worked back then and, like, make Home Alone 3 or something. Or, you know, like, let's keep let's keep revisiting Alien because people like that thing or something. It's like... It depends on the franchise for me. I mean, sometimes, like, I like... I mean, we got Blade Runner coming out now, right? I mean, yeah. Blade Runner... It's been a long time since Blade Runner, and it's a continuation of the story. Sure, is it a new idea? No. Is the movie good? I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's great. Yeah. And I don't mind that they're doing that. Sometimes I don't mind that they're rebooting a franchise. They remade Godzilla for the second time, and the most recent Godzilla is really good. Yes, it was. The last one with you know the music video featuring Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever he was going by then, Combs. Not so great. <laughs> no. But, but they made Chips with... Um... Which I heard was worse than hot garbage. <laughs> chips was great. Right? What about, uh, what was that other stupid one? Like 21 Jump Street or something, and then 22 Jump Street? Oh, yeah. Like, I don't don't find it completely repulsive that they do this, but at the same time, video games are also doing the same thing, too. But then there are some times where they really strike a nerve, like, in a good way. And, like, um, one of the ones that I'm really looking forward to is in, in December, Okami is getting an HD remake, which is a PS2 game. Now, it's not terribly old. But it's also like if you don't own Still that two game, generations ago. Yeah, and if you don't own that game and you really want to play it again, like, okay, I'm pretty. You know what? It's also twenty dollars. It's the first game that I've seen that's like an HD remastering of some yeah. older game that they're not charging fifty or sixty bucks for. It's like twenty bucks for this game. It's an it's an incredible game. Absolutely you, amazing. I think you can you can reimagine or even just remake a, a, a game and you can add a new experience to it. Yeah. Even if it's like a. Yeah, 
even if it's like a true recreation where you're not like to making total changes to it, you can still do it in a way that feels different because technology is advanced. The problem that I, I have is when they take the same game and it's like, all right, now you get 10 NAP graphics. Yeah, I know. And that's know, all 50 they do. bucks. You know, that's lame that's to me. That's not cool. No, they have to add a few things to it. Like Nintendo's always been really good about that. Like um, something you you and I most likely will not be playing, but um, Mario and Luigi and Bowser's Minions came out for the 3DS like last week. Okay? okay. It's one of the Mario RPG series of games. Um, and it's very good. And it was the first Game Boy Advance one to ever come out. It got remade for 3DS, okay? Well, the game itself is intact, and everything is pretty much the same, um, updated visually and, and, and playable on modern on modern handhelds, basically, right? But then they also added, like, an additional mode to the game, right, called Bowser's Minions, and it's, like, some sort of, like, you, you pick, like, a bunch of Goombas and Koopa Troopas, and you fight other Goombas and Koopa Troopas and other things I was like hoping that. you were going to tell me there were minions from, like, Despicable Me. No, no, no. It's not like that. Uh, Bowser sadly. walking around while all those little yellow guys were running, banana! <laughs> but they added those something else to great. the game, which I thought was cool. It's not just like, oh, here's this game again. It's yeah. like, okay, well, thanks. Uh, like, this extra mode, and apparently the extra mode is really good. So it, like, warrants, like, if you love the game and you'd love to play it again, well, good. There, there's your entry point, right? we got to have an entry point for yeah. everything. But then now there's an extra reason for you to be like, oh, cool. Like, this is Something great. different. Metroid Samus Returns is a good, was an entry point for me beyond the fact that I was going to buy because it, it was Metroid anyway. Yeah. And there's, like, an, a whole movement out there right now, by the way, of, like, anyone that, like, loves Metroid. There's people out there that have these, you know, bigger voices than me. And they're like, listen, we need everyone's help. If you love Metroid, you need to buy it because we need Nintendo to know that people care about this franchise because they stopped making them. And when they were making them, they were making garbage ones like Federation Other Force. M. And other M. But it's like, hey, we need to let our voices be heard. Well, I never played Metroid 2 to the fullest. I probably put like an hour or two into it and I got my hands on it, but I never owned it. So now this is my way of going back and playing the game. But that is a brand new game. I mean, we're yeah. talking black and white to full color 3D which uh, updated concepts and visuals which again and all it's that. because I mean like you and I have played two different games, but we can still share in the experience mm -hmm. of the game because yeah. it's it's in a lot similar. of ways, they're the same game. So. And that's so cool that you like the stuff that actually bothers me. You were just like, oh yeah, I remember that. I'm thinking, oh, that wasn't like a new thing they added to this game because I don't know. No, it's I mean, one like, of the few I've never played. So you know, and I could tell from the way you described it that there are elements to it that would be a new experience for me if I went back and played it. Yes, but it's still familiar enough that you know. Well, it, it's like a hybrid between Super Metroid and all the cool abilities and neat things you get in yeah. that game, and then um, mixing it with the storyline of Metroid Two, which I thought was great. Well, we want to know what you think. Is this really a, re a renaissance of nostalgic games and retro gaming? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. channel share it with your friends. And if you'd like to follow the group on Twitter, you can do that at, at Down4Punch. That's at D-W-N-F-W-D Punch. Or you can follow me at, at Sergio Armani. And David, how would you like everybody to get a hold of you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at David underscore B underscore Reed. Uh, and that, yeah, I remember. What if they misspell it, though? How do they know it's spelled correctly? Oh, you'll have it at the bottom. R-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-D. -E 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 -E. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something... It's it's like a, it's like got a lot of E's. Just guess. Yeah. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Don't forget the silent H. Yeah, and then occasionally you'll find me Twitch streaming, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Paul Blart Mall Blart, much like it sounds. So you can check that out, too. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, keep on gaming.